you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess Hover and I'm so excited you're here. So today is another coffee date video and it's part three of the series we've been doing where you send me questions about God and I'm answering your questions. It was originally gonna be one video, but then it became the world's longest video. So we broke it into three different parts. This is the last part. So it's gonna start kind of abruptly, but it's gonna end nice and smooth. The next video is gonna be a fun family one. And then next Tuesday, we'll do another coffee date video. And I don't know what it's about, but it's gonna be awesome. So thanks for watching. Now let's jump into your question. This is from Sinzioana. She says, I wanna tell you, I love watching your YouTube videos. Thank you. When I learned that you were a Christian, I was so excited. My question to you is about God and faith. Do you have a specific time set aside to read the Bible every day, or do you read it when you have time here and there? I find it hard to read my Bible. I do have time, but I end up wasting it on something else. Hope you get enough questions for your video. Can't wait. Hearts, hearts, hearts. You're so cute. Thank you. Yeah, I generally read the Bible in the mornings because everybody's sleeping and I'm up before them. That's unique because now Ellie is old enough where she sleeps longer. When I was a newer mom, I Basically, for the first year, maybe longer, I felt like I didn't have regular time of reading the Bible. It was just kind of whenever I could get a moment, great, and it was not that fun. I remember it feeling kind of chaotic and a little bit depressing. I felt like I couldn't grab a hold of anything. Like, my days blurred from one to the next because as a new mom, you just don't sleep very much, and it's not like there's an end of a day and then a beginning of a new day because you're up a bunch in the night. So, yeah, for new moms... Don't feel like you have to have a set aside time. If you can pull it off, you're awesome. I couldn't figure it out, but that's okay. I'm still Christian and still relating to God. So my current routine is that in the mornings I get up, I have coffee, I sit on my porch, and I read the Bible. I have the Bible app on my phone, and so I usually go through like a reading plan on there just because sometimes it's hard to stay focused and I get easily distracted. Uh, Sometimes my phone is actually more distracting because then I get messages or I'm tempted to look at Instagram or YouTube or whatever. So I also have like a real Bible, a book, and I read that and I really enjoy doing that. So I usually do that in the mornings and I journal in the mornings and that's really helpful. Also, it's pretty normal to feel distracted when you're reading the Bible. Um, try and overcome it because it's like... It's like how you need to drink water because water is really good for your body and you should probably drink water even when you're not thirsty because your body needs it. You need the word of God. You need it in you. It's, it's the bread of life that's going to fill you up and keep you grounded and you need it even when you don't want it. So try and prioritize reading the word. If it's difficult, like get a translation of it that you enjoy. Recently I really enjoyed reading the New Living Translation, so that's what I read. But New King James is good. These are all English translations. I don't know what the Spanish translations are, but I'm sure they're good. Last question here, because this is the longest video in history. It's from Pura Menta Savvy. And it is, in difficult times, depression and anxiety, it is very difficult to focus on God and his love for us. I know you understand what I mean. I do. How do you do it? How do you believe that God has a good plan for you, not only when it's easy and happy, but also when it's bad and our mind sees only the dark things, the bad things. With love, Sally. Sally, thanks for asking. I know. I'm like going through this right now. In fact, to be honest, I was crying to Sean this morning about how difficult it is to trust God and like remain believing truth when my mind is sometimes so dark and feels so the opposite of the truth that I read. Um... I guess that's why reading the Bible has been really encouraging in this time is because you read about people like Job, for instance. In the Old Testament, there's this book of Job where, um, I'm going to paraphrase this, but basically the story is that the devil's wandering around the earth looking at humanity, and he finds this guy, Job, and God and the devil are having a conversation, and God's like, have you considered my servant Job? He's like, he's righteous, he's, he's the best. Basically, like, he fears me, he honors me. What happens is the devil says, like, yeah, of course he does, because you make him prosper in everything he does. What if you let me have at it and just, like, work whatever I want to work in his life? Then will he still trust you? And so... God gives him permission, basically. God's still in control, and the, the way that the story plays out is the enemy does some horrific things in his life. He takes Job's kids, he, um, like, kills them. He, his livestock, his land, like, all of his work, everything fails. And even his own wife is like, you should curse God and die. Like, what is this? 
But Job continues to worship God all the way to the end. And then he ends up having a conversation with God that's pretty amazing and, uh, and like humbling himself before God. And then at the end of the story, God restores everything. So everything that Job went through, he gets back and it's worth it. I mean, yeah, it says that it's worth it. It's difficult to even process that whole story. But what I was thinking about today is how a lot of times when we're going through dark times, we just have our own perspective of it. So our own perspective is hopeless. Maybe we feel like we are failures. We feel like we're never going to get out of it. It's like you're in a dark tunnel and it's just never going to end. But when I look at scripture, I see that God is the ultimate authority, that even when things are going terribly wrong, like in Job's situation, it's actually going wrong because he was doing so good. And God, God's like allowing this craziness to happen just to show that Job's still going to worship God and then God's going to make it all work out and it's all going to be worth it. And it's like, it's hard to understand, but the comfort that I get in it is just realizing that there's a lot to my story that I don't know. There's a lot going on around me that God sees that I don't see. And that's what faith is. It says in the Bible that faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. And a lot of times, I don't see why things are as hard as they are. Like, I don't get why I would go through it. And for me, it's even been really hard because outwardly, things are really good. I have a lot of really wonderful circumstances, I feel like. But my struggle is a lot of time inside my head where it's just this, like, depressing hopelessness and heaviness and sadness. And, uh, yeah, but I just, I have to believe from what I see in scripture that like God says in Romans, I believe it's Romans 8, 18, it says your current suffering is not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed to you. And it's things like that, that like anchor me. And what I was telling Sean today is that I feel like I'm in this boat and I'm just being tossed around and I'm at the mercy of the waves. Like I don't have any control and I hate it. In some moments I feel great in some moments I feel terrible. But the thing that keeps me anchored is this hope of glory, this hope that I have in Jesus where scripture talks about God is taking us from glory to glory. And it even literally says that Jesus Christ is our hope of glory. And so I hold to that. And, and I believe based on all the things God's already done in my life, that whatever I'm going through is going to work out and it's going to be okay. And it's going to somehow be worth it. And even if I don't see all of that, on this side of heaven, it'll definitely be the truth in heaven. And so I hold to that. And, and a lot of times it's hard. And sometimes I can't believe it for myself. And I can't feel God. And I don't know what he's doing. But in those moments, then I cling to the love of a friend or the love of Sean or the love of my family to like keep me going. And then I get over that little bump. And then I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Everything's fine until the next struggle and that's, yeah, that's hard. That's life right now. I hope that it's not this hard always. And I, and I, yeah, I hope that whatever you guys are going through, that it gets better. I feel like it's going to. Um, but that's why we need prayer. That's why we need worship. That's why we need scripture. We need church. We need a community of believers around us to cheer us on because life is pretty hard and we weren't meant to do it by ourselves. Okay, that's the end of my video. I'm going to make more videos like this. I'm really thankful for you guys. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, the Sean Hover Reality Show on Snapchat. New episodes every day on Snapchat on Sean. He shows our family and skateboarding and his life, and it's really fun. And I'll make another video in a couple of days. And it'll be Eloise's second birthday, and it's going to be really fun. So I'll see you then. And then next week, another coffee date video, something great. I don't know what we're talking about yet, but it'll be awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Bye!